This is the first video of cerebral palsy and in this we will be discussing the commonest type of cerebral palsy that is spastic diplegia. I will discuss uh, the basic pathophysiology and uh, our pediatric neurologist uh, Dr. Shahana Sahamad will discuss the clinical features of spastic diplegic cerebral palsy. I shall now show a diagram. In the preterm baby the periventricular white matter is the watershed area that is between the major vascular territories. Hence, this area is most prone for ischemic injury in case of hypotension. This leads to infarction of that white matter that is periventricular just beyond the ventricles. And this infarcted area that will lose the white matter. So whatever uh, is going to remain will be uh, cis containing fluid. So that is uh, the so called periventricular leukomalacia. Many a time will show many cysts. Anatomically, the lower limb fibers go very close to the ventricle. So that is uh, uh, shown in this diagram. And the upper limb fibers are little away from that and the face fibers are still further away. So much so, when there is a hypotension and BP fall and damage to the periventricular area and it generally happens on both sides. So both lower limb, both lower limbs gets affected. And that is the basic pathophysiology of this uh, diplegic cerebral palsy. It spares upper limb and face. Face it totally spares upper limb. It also spares but some involvement may be there because as you can see in the diagram uh, just uh, beyond this lower limb fiber is the upper limb fiber. So some involvement may, the, may be there. So many a time there will be some increased reflux of the upper limb. But if upper limb is more involved, for example, infarcted area is going beyond the area of lower limb and involving the upper limb area, then there will be more involvement of upper limb. But once the upper limb is as much involved as the lower limb, then you do not call it uh, diplegia, then you call it tetraplegia or quadriplegia. Can we have uh, seizures and mental retardation? Uh, in the diagram you can see the cortex is uh, very much away from uh, this uh, area of infarction. So it is very unlikely. But in the very rare case of extensive infarction, maybe you can have uh, intellectual retardation and uh, seizures which is less than 1% of uh, diplegic cerebral palsy. I shall uh, show a couple of diagrams before I hand over to Dr. Shahana Sahamad. The first one, when the infant is held by the axilla, the lower limb gets crossed due to spasm of extensors and adductors. This is called a scissoring. And that is the reason for a mother complaining of difficulty in changing diapers. And as the child grows up, the diplegic child may walk on tiptoes, partially flexed knees and internally rotated and slightly flexed hip. Now over to our pediatric neurologist, uh, Dr. Shaina Sarma. Please. Um, namaste everybody. Today we are going to discuss the clinical features of the various types of cerebral palsy. So when we go into the clinical features, first, let us first take the uh, case of spastic CP or spastic cerebral palsy which is the most common type. Spastic CP is again subdivided into diplegic CP, hemiplegic CP and quadriplegic CP. Now diplegic CP is the most common type which is characterized by its presence predominantly in the preterm infants with the, uh, who are affected by hypoxia, ischemic insult etc. So diplegic CP is clinically characterized by weakness and hypertonia involving the, both the lower limbs. The upper limbs are subtly involved or subtly or minimally involved only and uh, on examination we tend to find that there is weakness of both lower limbs with the hypertonia of the spastic type. The spasticity involved of both lower limbs with the hyperreflexia that is exaggerated deep tendon reflexes and upgoing bilateral upgoing planta. Uh, regarding the developmental milestones it is it, this causes predominantly a motor delay or gross motor delay with uh, no uh, involvement of mentation, cranial nerves, higher function, 
uh, etc. And there is no epilepsy also. About the clinical presentations, in the in a case of diplegic CP, the mother usually initially complains of excessive insolvable cry, incons inconsolable crying during the first uh, month of life with uh, later on noticing difficulty in changing diapers, difficulty in cleaning the perineal area, etc. due to the adductor spasm involved in um, the um, diplegic CP. And uh, uh, later on, the mother notices reduced movements of the lower limbs when compared to the upper limbs and also stiff, uh, pattern of stiff movements with the lack of flexibility. These are the features of diplegic CP where there is predominantly motor involvement. Later on as the child age progresses, the, there are abnormal patterns of movement because the child's upper limbs are okay, the child wants to explore the environment. So naturally there will be delay in head control, delay in sitting etc. will be there. In addition, when the child tries to sit, the child cannot sit with the limbs extended. Uh, instead, the child has to adopt a posture of W sitting. And also this is because of the spasticity in the hamstrings which prevents the child from sitting in the proper fashion. Now uh, there is also altered patterns of uh, movement like for example crawling. When crawling starts we can notice that there may be a feature of feature like commando crawling where the child uses the upper limbs for crawling while the lower limbs are uh, just move along. This is commando crawling. Then there is bunny hopping and bottom shuffling where in bottom shuffling what happens is that the child tries to move laterally or laterally or forwards or to other sides with the, with the help of the upper limbs by using the force of the upper limbs but the lower limbs are kept in um, the, the bottom is shuffled with the help of the upper limbs. So because this is because of the lack of flexibility of the lower limbs. And another technique to move forwards is bunny hopping where the upper limbs are uh, used to move forwards by putting pressure on the floor and sort of a jump is made. This is bunny hopping. So these are the altered patterns of movement in diplegic CP. And uh, re uh, when you are asked uh, in regarding whether there is uh, uh, epilepsy uh, in ep chance of epilepsy in diplegic CP, the answer is that less than 1%, very low, very low percentage may have epilepsy in diplegic CP, otherwise it is not present.